Hi there, Christian Henson from Spitfire Audio here. It's a delight, if not absolute honour, to take you through my process behind creating the trailer for the recent announcement of the BBC Symphony Orchestra project. After three years, to be able to share with the world this pretty profound chapter marker in the history of sampling and the history of orchestral sampling in particular was uh, a kind of a quite a daunting prospect not least coming up with the first bit of music the first bit of the sampled orchestra anyone would hear so like with all film and tv and adverts and games music uh, what the music's trying to do is help tell a story so basically what i'm going to do here today is take you through the various different iterations of both the video and the music i did for it to take you on that journey with you before diving into how i used the bbc symphony orchestra to create it so let's just start with the video. I recommended they edited it to a temp track, and that temp track was the announcement music for Hans Zimmer strings. Whilst that's more gothic, it still had this sense of gravitas, and I didn't want it to be kind of fast moving or anything like that. I wanted it to be a kind of momentous occasion. Compared to the final uh, trailer that we ran, there's uh, differences in how we worded stuff, changes in cut order, that kind of stuff. I'm just going to kind of walk you through from the top. So for me, what I wanted to do is create much more of a, OK, sit down and listen moment. I wanted to give it a, a cinematic trope, have something quite cool starting at the beginning. So not going straight into the, the music per se. And then I think it was, I think that we cut one of these. Yes, I think we cut that card. So I wanted the music coming on, on when it says one orchestra there. So you'll see I'm treading water a lot and I would have basically written the music and gone, but let's get rid of that card. And I think cut one of the, the shots of the instruments as well. This shot is actually reverse. So basically what the shot was, was scooping into the orchestra. And then we were scooping back from the orchestra from the kind of proscenium view. And then we were going up above. So I, was thinking, I, I, I suggested them, let's have this journey as if we're going in one single camera move it's been split up. I think we just about get away with reversing the shot, but when you, if you look at the conductor in the centre of the frame, you'll see that actually he goes backwards on his score like he's checking what they just did. <laughs> there we go. But then you can see we're continuing that continuous kind of camera move. I think the main other key is that the reveal here 
Obviously, we're using temporary footage from Orbis. This is the big reveal. That is the climax. I don't want to go further up from there. Whilst it's great that we recorded it in Maida Vale, that's not the highlight of the story here. I really want to drive home this sense of this is just the beginning, and it is only just the beginning. There's, there's momentous announcements coming in early next year and stuff. So that's my brief to myself. The, the shape is a little bit more three-act than the temp music which was looped halfway through so we've got our act a which is the idea behind it we've got the build to the reveal and then we've got this sense of reflection and expectation it's quite tempting to go into some orchestral gymnastics to really show the orchestra off but for me the choice i make is to create something that conveys this story and conveys the correct emotion not necessarily something that's showing off the orchestra and it's something that i really fight against i really wanted to kitchen sink this but it was all about telling the story what's right for the kind of trope that i'm going for so after about i think a first day of a proper writing for about six hours i'm just going to play you where I got to. I'm going to talk to you about a note that Paul gave to me about how he felt I could improve it. Um, so I'll take you to that stage. And then the final stage, which is when I kind of uh, mixed everything together, organised a tempo map that I felt suited the picture better. And that's the point at which I'll just take you through track by track what's in there. Okay, so let's have a look at day one, about six hours work, where I got to. Pardon le fromage. Right, let's load up the next iteration. So Paul's note to me was, well, he liked the piece, but felt it lacked just a snudge of dynamism. And of course, I went all grumpy. Well, I think it's absolutely fine until I heard it the next day. And of course, he's absolutely right. So this is the penultimate version. You'll notice it's still just a couple of tempos. I'm doing a, a real slowdown at the end there to accommodate some of the picture changes that have been made. But in the final iteration, I do much more of a fluid tempo map, which you'll see shortly. So this is where I got to at the end of day two. So I think this is just maybe one or two two hours more work on it.
So the main notes to myself there is there's points I feel it's dragging and there's points where I feel it's not kind of sitting back and enjoying the majesty of the moment. So I wanted to create a much more human tempo map and also these slightly cool elements at the beginning, at the end, I wanted to work at those. So what I'll do now is just take you through each track in a rough kind of order of how I built things up. So headline points, the GUIs, this is just a placeholder GUI, it's not the release version, so if you're watching this after October 2019, this is not how it's going to look. It's kind of 95% there, but there's some BBC SO branding to go in. So I've got, I think, counting roughly 44 instances of the plugin, and because I've not been particularly hygienic, I'm just, they're all, all in ones. So if you have a look here, several pages of uh, violin articulations all loaded. I'm just using the one mic tree. It does look like I'm using the mono, but that's uh, been disabled there. Total memory hit is 5.29 gigabytes. But as I say, that's a lot of articulations loaded. And it's basically a track per articulation. So I'm not doing any key switching. And you can use this clever preset manager or pimper, as I call it, to get rid or add different articulations in to uh, optimize your system. Whoa. Well, that's good. That's a handy little function, cancel, to optimize your system for just the things that you're using. What's also great news about this tutorial is, for the first time, after the release in October, I will be able to give you the Logic session and a MIDI file version as well. And what I'll do, I'll just start with these, is I'll bounce down the non-BBC SO material to audio. So basically you should be able to load your session. It'll sound pretty much save maybe some of the mastering plugins exactly like it does here. So you can really unpick it yourself. What do we start with? Well, we start with an Albion One Easter Island hit, which I really like. And you can see that I've rolled off basically everything. I, I really, uh, really like this Stevenson. I believe it's from the very first iteration of Albion. Kind of imagine like listening to stuff on the planet from space. Uh, we got from the BBC uh, World Service announcement, which is this. This is London calling. And what I did is I time stretched that. This is London calling. Here we've got uh, some pan automation there. This and then there's a few bright artifacts at the top. So I did a channel EQ. Bit of delay. And just a bit of distortion. Now, what I wanted this to sound like was like a PA system for the entire planet. So we have that dry signal and then basically a duplication of that signal with this enormous black hole reverb from FabFilter. It's just a kind of massive delayed reverb, basically. So you've got the dry signal and then the re fully reverberated signal coming in, just giving it a sense of enormity. And you can hear that the channel EQ is a, a slightly different profile as well. So I've not chopped the bottom end off on that. Uh, last bit of non-BBC material is from a free sound effects site. I got an orchestra tuning up and I just time stretched that. Very subtle, bit of channel EQ to beast the signal mainly and take the very top off and some delay. So I matched the oboe of that orchestra tuning up with the BBC oboe. And it's just a solo oboe here, legato patch. Beautiful stuff. And also I believe we put a string in as well, like a, uh, my new favorite sound, which is the cello saltasto.
Everything's kind of bussing to this reverb, which is just the Concert Hall Vienna FabFilter Pro R, which I'm a fan of. This is when I started to build the track up, and I'm just a big fan of a Carleno tap, tap, tap thing. I think it's probably inspiration from Hans Zimmer's Thin Red Line. But this is the cello all-in-one playing the Carleno. So this is what I actually wrote the track on, the cello Sultasto, amazing sound. So here we go. Because it's kind of quite high up for a cello, there's that, that reach, there's that fragility that I really enjoy. So it's just pad chords, me doing hybrid style electronic or orchestration. I'm not trying to, this is not going to be played by a real orchestra. So not really thinking of each line as its own melody. I just add those on top later. Uh, I think some would call that lazy writing. I think what I also did was I stacked on top of that the first violins playing flautando. And yes, the flautando sounds awesome. Very different to our hall flautandos. So just the one mic, the tree mic is just absolutely fantastic. And then finally, just got your more standard, just a basic long. So expressive. So those all combine to sound a little something like this. Then just recorded in unison CBs and VCs. And you'll see that I've just, for ease of use, just taken these down by an octave. Now that's not tuning them down by an octave, that's just transposing the song. So basically I'm playing samples an octave beneath the cellos. And this is an alias of that track. So this is what they sound like in concert. Portamentos there. Add a, add a bit of intrigue. And we've also got some pizzicatos again in unison, basses and cello. Just gonna run that without the reverb. So again, you get a sense of the room. You'll see me switch it in. Again, so you've got that scale, but just without the massive reverb tail. Absolutely sublime. Some shorts to add a bit of interest. I did a bit of cheeky monkeys there. So the, the channel delay is just me adding it in as a, like a trim stage. But let's just hear it without. Any unevenness there is caused by this tempo map. And then I added a bit of just delay to add a kind of slightly hybrid sound to it. So the main addition in version two, after Paul gave me that note, were these very expressive legato sections, really picking out some form of melody, both in the cellos and the violins. And the portamento. 
which you select with velocity. percent together admittedly i haven't quantized them it's just my playing but i think all of these slight minute little imperfections help things feel that much more natural we had some nice little trill moments here which again added some delay to and some kind of extra splosh i think lovely Let's hear that with the splosh And more beautiful flat handos. Now, whilst I haven't used this function that much, Paul and Andy use it a lot more than me. Remember that these legatos and these longs do have vibrato control. It's really interesting if you listen to the difference between those and the firsts. Firsts play out a lot more. This is, again, where you get the cohesion of a symphony orchestra, the different ways in which an orchestra blends together to create this very cohesive sound. So, just lock that up. The only other thing that I've added in is the trusty sine wave there, just to sit an octave under the basses to give it that slightly more modern sound. So, let's run that and all the strings together. Massive build-up of, of numbers there. So next on to the woodwinds and the brass, we've got this beautiful oboe picking out the melody alongside the violins. Again, with uh, full vibrato control, we've got these great flute and piccolo shorts here. And then we've got a piccolo rip here. Again, apologies for that. So this is the flute A3. just love the depth of this room. You can really tell where they are, how far back they are. And this is, again, just the tree mic. So it's not just about this kind of uh, latitude here panning. It's, it's, it's all about depth and distance from the microphones. We've got a bass clarinet. I know I put a little bit of something on there. just one of the few ones that I added just a bit of EQ to. I work a lot with a flute player called Andy Finden, who also plays bass clarinet, and he just makes it absolutely bark. So I just wanted to get a little bit more bark out of it by just pushing up the top end here. A bit of crunch there. Horns and trumpets pretty much working together. Let's have a listen to the horn on its own. 
It's the legato. Beautiful chocolatey sound. Let's introduce the trumpet. Got this great bass trombone. So this part is basically an alias, it says harp somewhat confusingly, of the tuba and contrabass tuba, which again, extraordinary sounding. So I actually drop below the bass trombone's range there, but you'll hear it picked up by the tubas. take off the reverb so you can really hear the room. Amazing sound, isn't it? So the tenor bones, we give a little bit of responsibility as well. Next up, our beautiful harp. Again, these are not lightly sampled, but we just have this repeating pattern. Some glockenspiels. Helping with the melody. Xylophone. Timpani. These kick drums. Okay, let's have a listen without the reverb. So again, the room, it's all in there, but it just hasn't got that huge decay. Symbols. I believe we start with a cheeky little chime as well. And that's basically about it. If you want to see how the final film came out, just from a visual point of view, it's linked above and below. What I'll do is I'll run this down with the penultimate cut of the movie, but also just concentrating on what the MIDI's doing so you can see for yourself. If you're watching this after we've released the BBC SO, there'll be a kind of cleaned up version with any non-BBC SO stuff saved as audio as a logic file, but also as a MIDI file so you can compare notes with us. Thanks as always for watching. Do subscribe if you haven't done already. Lots of very exciting stuff coming up. Ding that bell if you want to be notified the next time we put a video up and one of those for the efforts of this fantastic orchestra, the BBC Symphony Orchestra. See you next time.